In this section, we're going to look at the basics of dashboard design and how you can go about creating your own dashboards. This section will have two main parts. First of all, we're going to have an overview of all the different widgets that are used in dashboards and how they can be used. And then we'll go into a basic step-by-step -step creation process for basic dashboard design. So let's begin with the dashboard widgets overview. In this video, we'll cover off what are widgets and what are the different types how widgets are used in dashboard, and what widgets are used for different situations. So let's start with this section with an overview of widgets and how they're used in dashboards. Dashboards certainly are a key part of Visualize Operations Manager, and they're used for two primary purposes. One, to look at metrics and visualize certain alerts, alarms, levels of the metrics, green, yellow, red, etc. They're also used in an interactive way for use cases around things like troubleshooting. Certainly when you install a solution covered in the solutions chapter, you can see that very certain dashboards come with different solutions. So for example, we can see a dashboard that is relation to vCloud Air, and it uses certain widgets configured in a certain way to display metrics that might be useful to an operations administrator around vCloud Air. I've got one set up in a similar fashion for my cluster, giving me relevant metrics and details of the, about things that are important to me. We can have more of an interactive dashboard, such as this application troubleshooting dashboard, where I'm picking a container inside Visualize Operations, I pick a particular object, in this case maybe the Apache object, it's part of Visualize Automation, then I can look at performance metrics around, or availability metrics around availability of Tomcat, um, look at other metrics around performance of things like RabbitMQ, etc. Whatever the use case and whatever the dashboard, it's widgets to play a primary role in creating those dashboards. So, for example, if we have a look at some of these dashboards uh, that come with Visualize Operations Manager out of the box, we've got different views around D, uh, DOS cluster setting, operations view. Each one of these panes where you can see a gap, uh, uh, and we've got these like minimize, edit, collapse, help, each one of these is a widget. And we can add and customize widgets for all sorts of different use cases. So let's go and have a look at some of the main the widgets that we can create our dashboard for ourselves and what some of the use cases they might be used for. Now, to give us a bit of an idea about what sort of widgets are available, we'll start off by creating a dashboard and you can have a bit of a look and see how many different widgets are available based on the use case. So we'll create a dashboard. We'll just give it a fake name for now. If we head to the widget list under the Create Dashboard, we can see a large list of dashboards that we, and widgets that we can use on our dashboard. It's quite simple in terms of drag and drop, which we'll cover off in the next video. And we can drag and drop them directly onto the canvas and select what their focus is, drag more widgets next to each other, etc. Now, in the interest of time for this video, you won't be able to go through all the different widgets that are available in VROPS 6.3. So instead what we'll do is we'll go through some of the out-of-the-box dashboards that come in VROPS and show how widgets can be used in different ways to create very powerful dashboards. The first is the operations view, which is an out-of-the-box dashboard of VROP 6.3. We can see here different types of dashboards doing different functions. If we go to the actions and edit the dashboard, we can actually see how the widgets have been configured. The first thing you'll probably notice is that the default names of the widgets have been replaced. For example, the inventory summary at the top is giving us number of running VMs, powered off VMs, clusters, hosts, data stores, etc. Where that's actually coming from is a particular widget. Now, that widget is the scoreboard widget. We can see here an example of the scoreboard widget that looks quite similar. One of the first things that's done when you drag a widget onto a dashboard, people usually rename it to the particular context they're referring to. In this case, it's an inventory summary, and particular objects or object types have been selected, the layout of the widget's been selected, etc. This is a common example of how a widget is configured for a display use case. Next, we've got a selected data center. Now, the selected data center use case is um, based on the um, very common object list uh, widget. It has been filtered to only show data centers in the list, and when you use a Selexis data center, the other widgets are affected by interactions. We can see interactions under the interactions pane, and we can see, for example, that the top 15 VM, uh, top 15 lists, for example, there's three of them here, have got the uh, object that's the impacting them as the selected data center drop down box, which will impact what gets shown in these widget boxes down below. Let's cover off another use case as well. The capacity overview use case. So again, this is another default out of the box dashboard of VROP 6.3. And we can see here very different dashboards. Especially one that's quite interesting is the memory capacity utilization trend widget. Now if we edit this dashboard, 
we can see first of all a couple of things that were similar with the last dashboard. We see select an environment, which is the same sort of object list as before. Total capacity, again, which is based off the scorecard widget. What's interesting is this um, memory capacity utilization trend. That's based on the view widget. So, for example, we have the view widget on the left here. Now, the view widget is very powerful because we can create a view on any use case. So, all that all needs to be done, all these administrator needs to do is pre create a, a view for a certain use case and they can drag it into a widget just like this particular use case here. So, here we've got the memory capacity utilization trend view. Someone has dragged that into a dashboard as a widget and combine it with a few different other widgets, for example, reclaimable capacity, a few other options, and therefore we have a great dashboard on the capacity overview. Now that we've covered off some of the basic widgets and some of the common dashboards they're used with, let's go through and have a look at the basics about configuring a widget. To do this, we'll create a dashboard from scratch and we'll just put one simple widget in it. Let's call it Cluster Health. For this, I'm going to pick a widget from the list. Now I'm not going to make this an interactive dashboard, I'm going to make it a static dashboard. So I'm simply going to show the health chart of all the hosts in my, in my cluster. To do that I first drag the widget on. Now I can configure the widget in terms of its size, its shape, how much of the screen it will take up, whether there are any other widgets next to it, and I'll call this widget my cluster health chart. Now there's a couple of different basic options we can go through. A lot of these are the same for many widgets, although some widgets do have some unique configuration. The first is the refresh content. This, this decides whether the widget automatically updates itself on a certain interval. This works well for sort of those network operation center type dashboards that are scrolling through and you want to have automatic updates without a user having to click anything. The next is the cell provider. The cell provider is quite important and it's a common reason why people, if they're starting to play off with dashboards, don't get content showing up. Cell provider means is the dashboard have its own context set already out of the box, or is this being, or is the context for this dashboard being set by interaction? For example, if we're using an interaction to provide the context of what this dashboard, this widget is going to look at, we'll have self provider off. However, if we wanted to preset it to a certain value, uh, and we want it static and showing all the time, we'll have self provider on. Next, in this case, we can choose the mode in terms of are we looking at the object itself, or are we looking at its children, or are we looking at its parent. And finally here, because it's a health chart, we can look at some of the core badges, health, risk, efficiency, custom, for example. So in this case, let's look at the cluster. So if we go object types, we can narrow this down just to show the compute cluster resource. There's only one in my environment. However, in my case, we're just going to be looking at the children of that, which will be the vSphere hosts themselves. I'll order the, the value by ascending health, and I'll have self provider on. I'll save that. And we get a preview of the widget. As we can see here, here are the ESX hosts in my environment and a spark line showing their health. That concludes the first video on what are widgets and how they're used in different situations and use cases.